All right, guys, welcome back. This is going to start our unit on the issue of sectionalism, or the dividing of the nation over the issue of slavery. And this really begins in 1848 when there's an even number of slave and free states in the country, but it's clear that the U.S. is going to win the Mexican-American War and that the land that they're going to acquire is going to upset that balance. David Wilmot of Pennsylvania proposed that all of the territory be totally free of slavery, uh, mainly because the Northerners knew the Missouri Compromise didn't apply and they didn't want it to keep spreading. Southerners ended up voting it down. Now, but neither the Democrats nor the Whigs really took a firm stand on slavery, and Democrat Lewis Cass proposed that you just let the territories decide for themselves. This angered a lot of anti-slavery Whigs and Democrats, and they joined forces and formed the Free Soil Party. They nominate Mount Martin Van Buren, who pulls enough votes away from Cass to allow Zachary Taylor to become president. 1849. Zachary Taylor, son of a frontier planter, was doing well for himself. He'd taken 300 acres of Kentucky land and turned it into assets in three states worth $120,000, six million in today's money. He'd helped his country expand too. As a general in the Mexican-American War, he beat back thousands of Mexican forces. In the process, earning America more than a half a million square miles of new territory. And now, the man nicknamed Old Rough and Ready was the 12th president of the United States. Zachary Taylor is not completely different from previous presidents in that he was a military hero, like Andrew Jackson, but he was also one of the largest slaveholders in the country, which made him acceptable to the South. So the combination of slaveholder and popular hero made him irresistible. But Taylor had never held political office, and his official views on slavery and the growing discord between North and South were unknown. Taylor was a mystery in a certain way. The worst thing about him is that he never voted in his life until he ran for president. So I don't think there was enough of a Taylor record to suggest which way he would have gone. The 64-year-old general had been elected with just 47% of the popular vote, and all eyes were on him, with the country in a precarious position. The nation was in a serious crisis over the question of whether slavery should be allowed to expand westward into the areas that had just been obtained from Mexico in the Mexican War. There were various proposals put forward, but none had enough support to garner a majority. And Southerners were threatening that if they didn't get protection for slavery in the West, they would secede from the Union. The issue of slavery was a can that had been kicked down the road by the country's leaders since the Founding Fathers. But now, the future of slavery was directly tied to the recent spoils of war. Present-day New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and California. If you open up a new territory and slaveholders are able to bring a huge labor force with them into a rich land, not put to commercial agricultural use, the slaveholders have a huge advantage over just a single guy with his family showing up and trying to carve a farm out of it. Southerners were trying to keep up with the North, whose industrial advances were becoming more productive and more lucrative. In the North, there were factories, there was industry. The difference that polarized North and South was the conviction which had been growing for almost 30 or 40 years, that in the North, the economic system was the wave of the future, that that was the normal expression of human society. Taylor, a strong nationalist, was concerned about the stability of the Union if the slavery debate continued to seep into the new territories. So he made a bold statement. He says, bring California into the Union as a free state. There are about 100,000 people there. Then admit New Mexico, which will come in without slavery because the people of New Mexico don't want slavery. Slaveholders thought they would have his support to move slavery westward. But Zachary Taylor had no interest in moving slavery westward. He thought that this issue was dangerous. And so he stood with Northerners. Southerners were incensed, feeling betrayed by a fellow slaveholder, and South Carolina threatened to secede. The president was enraged. What's interesting about Taylor is not only is he a slaveholder, but he is very pro-union. So he actually comes out with a statement saying that he would hang anyone who tries to separate the union. 
That is what Andrew Jackson said when South Carolina tries to nullify a federal tariff. Jackson says, I'll personally hang the governor of South Carolina. Uh, Taylor is that kind of general. Now, because California's admission to the Union will upset the balance of slave and free states, because California was going to be a free state. It was a territory that had no desire to have slavery. Southerners and Northerners are angry over this, and Henry Clay comes back again, author of the Missouri Compromise, to propose a new compromise. And his suggestion was that California be admitted to a, as a free state, and that we give some concessions to the North and the South. John C. Calhoun worried that this would uh, open the South to attacks from the North on the issue of slavery, and his suggestion was that we either make a constitutional amendment to protect the state's rights or to secede from the Union. Daniel Webster, senator from Massachusetts, spoke out against this uh, idea and supported Clay's proposals, and he pleaded with the nation to stop this sectional divide that was splitting the nation in half. Uh, and this is going to, just going to lead to some huge, huge issues. Thanks, guys, for listening. I know that was a short little intro to this issue of sectionalism. Hopefully we took good notes, and we'll see you tomorrow.